Now, in order to do this activity, uh, you're going to need data files. So if you click on this data file, or that link, you'll see it brings you to the data files for all of the chapters for the whole course. We're in chapter one, of course, so you'll go to chapter one. And there's really only one data file there, because you're only going to work with one data file in chapter one. Uh, double click on that. And that opens up into a Google Sheet. Now, the, here's the data. You can see it's a it's a pretty it's a decent sized data set. Uh, this is for, uh, data from Milgram's actual study. This is uh, his real data. Now, in order to analyze this data in JASP, which is what you've previously downloaded, uh, you'll need to convert it from this Google Sheets format into something called a CSV file. And you do that by clicking on File, Download, over and down to uh, CSV. So if you click on that, uh, you'll just want to save it to your downloads file somewhere, somewhere where you know where it is. On this screen, it comes down here. So when I click on this, it will open as a CSV file. Now I don't really need to open it because what I want to do is open it into JASP. So I have JASP open over here. And if you click in this little area, you can open a file. And I want to go to my computer. And I want to go to downloads because that's where I saved the file. And there it is. And then it opens up. And then we're going to need to use um, this program to answer several questions in Activity 1.1. The first set of questions in Activity 1.1 asks you, asks you to deal with um, this variable. Uh, I should maybe review briefly how, this, how all data files are going to be organized. Each column is a variable. So this is a variable that was asked, uh, where they asked uh, psychologists to make a prediction about uh, the results of the Milgram study. And then uh, they gave a number based on what their prediction was. And then each row is a person in this data set. Um, this data set, that, that one rule is violated in this one data set, but this is for uh, individual one, for this variable, this would be individual one. This would be individual two for this variable, and so on. Now, there's these little icons for each variable next to the name. And that icon tells you the scale of measurement that that uh, variable is measured on. Now, uh, this variable is a scale. Uh, that's why it has it kind of looks like a, a, a ruler, maybe, a measuring stick. Uh, in order to, to get what's called a frequency table, which is something I'll show you how to do here in a second, with this variable, um, you're going to have to change this from the scale variable to an ordinal variable. And you simply do that by clicking on the, the little icon. It won't work if you click on the name. you got to click on the little icon. Click on, uh, it's already a scale, but in order to get a frequency table, which is what we're going to want, you're going to have to change it to ordinal. Notice how the symbol changes. So let's go ahead and um, demonstrate some of the things you're going to have to do in Activity 1.1 with JASP. So if you click on Descriptives, and then Descriptives again, you can see all of the variables in the data set are listed over here. The first thing you'll have to do in the activity is work with this psychologist predictions variable. So you'll move that over. Now you could put all of the variables over there at once, but it might make it kind of confusing. Uh, so I'd recommend doing it one at a time until you get the hang of it. Now you can see what happened automatically. As I move this over, the results automatically appear over here on the right. If I push that back, notice it's blank, right? As soon as I do it, it generates the results. Now I'm going to want a frequency table here. So uh, if you click on 
that box, then I'm going to get my frequency table. And if we want, we can um, use these little navigation arrows to move things around. This brings me back to the data. This shows me my analysis options screen and then my output screen. And you know, you can make this bigger or smaller as you see fit. So uh, some of the things you're gonna have to do in uh, the activity is really reading this table. The like this frequency distribution table. If you if you look at it, um, you're gonna have to identify what the highest score is. Well, these are the scores. This is uh, participants had to respond based on uh, how high they thought, uh, it's, how how many uh, level, what level of shock they thought a um, participant would administer to um, a confederate. And uh, you can see by the highest score here is 20. That's This is the X column. This is the actual score, and this is the frequency. So one person said that they would go to 20, right? So this is the number of, so uh, four people said eight was the highest level that people would go, and so on. Uh, you're gonna have to find the mode. Well, the mode is the most common score, so it would be here. So the mode is 10 because 14 people said it. 14 is not the mode, no. 14 is what makes 10 the mode. Uh, the total number of responses you have is given down here. So there were 40. If you t add up these, uh, there's one port score that's missing. So if you and then uh, another thing you have to do is find the number of um, responses uh, over a specific score. So how many people gave a score of 12 or more? So you would add up these. Don't count the missing one. So he gave a score of 12 or more. Well, 12, 2, 13, 2, 21. So it would be 5. Uh, and something else you're going to have to do is uh, the percentage of responses over a specific score. So you're going to have to add up the people who did respond um, and divide that into uh, the number in the numerator, which would be, in this case, say I wanted the percentage of people who said 12 or more. So it would be, again, five is the number of people. And then we need to divide that by uh, 39 or 40, it depends on whether this total includes um, the missing score or not. So you want to count those up to make sure you know which whether you should divide by that 5 by 39 or divide by 40. Make sure you know whether or not this total includes the missing or not. Then you want um, the score at a given percentile is another thing you'll have to do. So 9 is the score and it is at the 51st percentile. That's the cumulative percent. The cumulative percent is the percent of scores at a given level or below in terms of score value. So nine is at the 51st percentile because uh, 51 and some change percent of the scores are at or below a score of nine. Okay. Uh, we can also do some graphs if we wanted to. So if you click on plots here, uh, we can generate a plot of the data. So again, this is really the exact same information we saw here, but just presented graphically rather than in a table form. Now, a graph is useful because it allows you to see the shape a little more easily. You can s clearly see where the mode is. That kind of pops out. You can see that scores are kind of spread out, lots of variability in scores. And that's that's pretty easy to see in the graph, a little more difficult to see in the table. But uh, the table is better in terms of precision. Like how many people gave a score of 10? Well, it would be really hard to tell from the graph, but 
it'd be really easy to tell from the table. So again, both of them are useful, but for different purposes. I think that's enough information to get you started with activity 1-1. Uh, if you have any questions, of course, you can always give me an email or contact me in any, some other way, and I will uh, try and answer your questions. I hope it all goes well for you.